Have you told your friends that you see ghosts? Oh, absolutely not. Gina Rodriguez returns in Not Dead Yet. I'm back, baby. Who is up? Oh, she's the obituary writer. And Brad Garrett joins the brilliant ensemble cast. Titan, Maverick, Titan of all Mavericks. These are all words used to describe me. Baby, I got you shook, got you shook. Not Dead Yet, season premiere. Tonight, 8.30, 7.30 Central on ABC and stream on Hulu. never seen anything until you've seen the sun through the rings of Saturn. You'll never see anything again because you're staring at the fucking sun, you idiot. On this week's Horror Movie Night, we take a peek into Adam's future with the Incredible Melting Man. While our decomposition is taking place on the inside, centrally located in the liver, this movie's titular character is a bit less subtle. Take off your tube top and yell at your wife because it's time once again for <laughs> Horror Movie Night. <laughs> good stuff yeah he got he got a, a lot of uh a lot of good references all up in there well that was the Im- incredible melting man this is horror movie Dude, night what did no, you guys no. watch i have got so I'm, many notes well i'm glad like we got one of us does because i don't know what the fuck to say about this movie man <laughs> this is weird shit who picked this you did no i picked this oh fuck you <laughs> uh okay so full disclosure for everybody um well to listeners so we did Street Trash a couple weeks, like a month ago, and uh, I watched it on YouTube. And the next, like the suggested movie was after it was The Incredible Melting Man. And I was like, you know what? I've never watched it. It can't be that bad, right? I was wrong. So I watched it, and then I, t- I messaged Adam and Matt, and I'm like, guys, this is what I just did. It sucks. And Matt was like, like you took notes, right? I was like, "What?" And he said, "Yeah, we're pick. We're discussing that in November." I'm like, "Fuck no!" <laughs> so I had to rewatch it like a couple weeks later, and um, I don't recommend it. It's not a good I've, movie. I've owned this movie on three different formats. Um, I had the VHS tape for a while. I bought a bootleg from VHS PS. And the other and... one was a laser disc. It's like a big <laughs> CD, but there's a movie on there. <laughs> um, and then Scream Factory put a Blu-ray out for it. So I picked that up. Um, so here's the, here's my history with Incredible Melting Man. Is be that good. this This was on an episode of Mystery Science Theater 3000 that I remember watching as a kid. And no one seems to remember this episode, but it scared the shit out of me like i was like six when i saw this and it was specifically the dude's decapitated head floating down the stream like really really unnerved me so for the longest time i avoided this movie at all costs and then was like you know what i'm gonna tackle my fears with this and the movie's not good like i'm never gonna pretend that the movie's good but i think that the movie is a lot more fun than you guys are giving it credit for uh so the movie was actually written with the intention of being a dark comedy. Uh, the, the writer and director wanted this movie to kind of be like a comedic homage to the cheesy, like science gone wrong fifties films, but the studio would only finance it if it was a grim, dark horror film, which is why the movie feels like so unbalanced. Like some of it's presented as a horror film. And then there's like other parts like, Oh my God, it's his ear which are like supposed to be part of like the comedic idea of how dumb the concept is where your main villain is just a dude who's melting that literally just melts to death. That's how the movie ends. Well, and no and one killed him. There, there's <laughs> a, you can see where there were jokes in it. Cause there's that one line where he's like, we'll just use the Geiger counter. And she's like, is he radioactive? And the guy's like, I don't know. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> or like, there's that weird scene where she, 
he's talking to his wife and he's like, get me some crackers. She's like, we don't have any crackers. What do you mean something's happening with Steve? He's like, wait, we don't have any crackers. <laughs> like, and she's like, I don't know about the goddamn crackers. Our friend's dying. He's like, so the crackers. God damn it, woman. Get your goddamn priorities straight. <laughs> now, that, that severed head um, is pretty funny because we see it. He throws it in the river and then it like goes down a waterfall and then we see it again. It was like a homeward bound, but for a severed head. It was fucking <laughs> If I could have yeah. just watched the journey of that severed head for the rest of the movie. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the thing, though, is, like, this movie is super uneven. And if that's the reason why, I guess it's okay. But, man, it's it's not worth watching a second time. Another shining example of this movie being super uneven is, again, back to the fisherman's head. So the Incredible Melting Man kills a fisherman and tosses the head into the water. And it's like a solid 30 seconds of it following this head, just bobbing down the water. And then it immediately cuts to two men having a conversation. The guy starts with, so Janine's pregnant. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But like, uh, without you telling me that, uh, that this is, was originally supposed to be like a dark comedy. There's nothing There's nothing in the film as, like, a casual observer that doesn't make you just think, wow, this writing is shit and these actors are terrible. Yeah, I mean, think about the name, though. Even the name is such, like, an absurd, like, mocking the the amazing colossal man and stuff like that. So I can see what they were trying to do, and I can see how the studio fucked this one up. It is notable, though, that it is Rick Baker's first special effects film or one of his first special effect films who later went on to do like the werewolf transformation, American werewolf in London and stuff like that. Um, and I do think that all things considered for what is clearly a very low budget horror film from the seventies, the effects are not terrible. No, I, I don't want to, I don't want to praise this too much. I, the whole time I was watching this movie, I was like, the three of us could do this. Like we could do this. No problem. (laughs) Well, I'm really glad in the intro you called out the one line that Steve has, which is you've never seen anything until you've seen the sun through the rings of Saturn, because his delivery on that line is so atrocious (laughs) that, like, it's a good thing his character has no other lines of dialogue and just melts the whole fucking movie. Because, (laughs) Jesus. You've never seen anything until you've seen the sun through the rings of Saturn. (laughs) (laughs) There's something else I need to send you guys real quick, and because <laughs> it's fucking incredible, uh, and I'll I'll try to save this picture so I can share it later. But they expected that this movie was going to be such a huge hit that there was an incredible melting man children's costume in the seventies. What? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god, and it looks terrible. <laughs> With a hot pink pants. <laughs> um, so, well, I mean, there's not too much to focus on. Uh, this movie's got all of the trappings of a bad movie. It's got almost every line of dialogue is d- delivered with the most monotone, like, disinterested delivery. Uh, there's a weird, like wacky goofy sequence with helen and harold the elderly parents yeah as... okay oh, so th- i i had something about that is it is it yeah. a lemon stealing horror hot. joke <laughs> <laughs> close it's hot oranges which is a different kind of sex thing <laughs> oranges harold let's steal them <laughs> <laughs> and then okay so are you trying to tell me that a doberman can't run faster than these old, like, oh, these hobbling geriatric God. people. They're, they're, like, five feet in front of the car, and the run back to the car is three minutes of the movie. <laughs> they are so horny, those old people. So yeah. horny. <laughs> so this is another perversion that uh, the writers wanted to get in there. You know, it's always, like, the 40-year-old woman who's, like, just dripping, just waiting to get banged. Um, in in the movies that we discuss, uh, this one's a little bit different. It's eighty year olds who are just ready to get fucked. So, <laughs> and then they do. The melting man just makes them super wet all over. Yeah. So the the slow running of them into their car is in keeping with the incredible slow motion nurse chase that starts off this movie. Yes. Um, 
which is pretty much that sets you up for what you are you you know what you're in for during that long shot of a woman in slow motion running and then she just bursts through a glass door (laughs) (laughs) um i do have another question relating to the old couple though which is the uh the the parents or or the the mother-in-law and mother-in-law's boyfriend of the the main guy trying to find steve and his wife is aware that steve is on the loose murdering people so you feel like you would do more to be like you know what mom don't come and visit just stay home there's no reason for you to he, he come even here. tries to call it off and she's like mm, no can't they're already on their way <laughs> i have a question about um, the old couple do you think that the old lady had seen that video on youtube of the grapefruit technique where you cut a hole in the grapefruit and then you <laughs> suck the dick with the grapefruit around the dick that's what she was trying to do with it. i hope so <laughs> Jesus. The hot oranges. No, if the, if the uh, melting man hadn't got them, they both would have died of shattered pelvises anyway. So whatever. <laughs> uh, the so we had a pretty good track record, guys, but we got another rapey scene in this movie too, and I forgot about it, and it actually made me really uncomfortable uh, with the photographer ripping the top off of the, the model. Um, yeah, thankfully, it doesn't get stuff. too ridiculous. I did but, not geez. care for that. No, thank. You. No. Um, but then there's this whole weird thing where, like, this is just the '70s in a nutshell. Is creepy photographer demands that the girl modeling for his photos gets naked, rips her top off. They find and a dead he- body. Girl is in the back seat of a cop car. Guy just snapping photos. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, Dr. Ted is like, get the fuck out of here. Get away from <laughs> I like uh, speaking of Dr. Ted, there's a there's a Dr. Ted freak out with his wife that is like one of my favorite freak outs in the movie, which is when he gets hung up by like the, the sergeant hangs up on him and he's just like she comes in and she's like, Hey honey, how's work? He's like, God damn guy hung up on me two fucking times. Like he's just so pissed off and fired up about it. Ugh. I love it. Love, love, <laughs> st- this movie is still set in the day and age where if your wife starts freaking out, you just grab her by the shoulders and shake the shit out of her. <laughs> um, the only other note that I have about this movie, because we've just been fucking steaming through this one, is I really, really, really love the death of the sergeant where he just gets hurled onto a bunch of fucking power lines. Yeah, that – okay, so – that's the weirdest thing about this movie, I think, is that there are, like, three effects that are super competent. There's that one, which is super, super cool to watch. Uh, and then there's the the decapitated head when it goes down the river and it, like, goes over a waterfall and splats on a rock. That's actually really good. And um, oh, I don't even remember what the third one is now, but, you know – like. Pretty pretty good stuff, and but the, the the thing is is that this movie needs to be special effects heavy because you have a melting man, <laughs> but he just looks like they tossed some yogurt on him. So uh, I was reading up on the movie as I tend to do, and <laughs> supposedly a few things. Uh, one thing was that the way that the incredible melting man was created was literally a bicycle helmet that the actor had to wear. That just had a fake face on it. They would just keep throwing goop on it. Um, oh. Syrup as well. So he's out in the desert with all these ants and bugs and shit. And he's just covered in syrup. And apparently, uh, I'm trying to find where I read it, but apparently Rick Baker had made a way more disgusting um, effect. And the actor just straight up was like, nope, not doing it. So <laughs> uh, let's see. The film's budget was so low, the production couldn't afford stock footage of Saturn for its opening scene. Instead, public domain stock footage of the sun and moon satellites were used to create Saturn. Uh, here wow. it is. Um, wow. Reportedly, makeup artist Rick Baker created a number, numerous gru- uh, very gruesome apply, uh, applications that were never used because the star of the film refused to wear any of them. Huh. Yeah. So, Melting Man could have looked probably a lot better. Especially given like Rick Baker's special effects history and 
you know, he's he's definitely one of the best ones in the game. Like right up there with like a Stan Winston or a Screaming Mad George. So what about Tom Savini, man? And, you know, Tom Savini is good, but I I feel like he's good for deaths. I don't think that he's good for like recreating a, like a like creating a look, a distinctive look. Yeah, I guess you're right. I hadn't really thought about it like that, but, uh, but yeah, like, he. I think that it, his is very realistic because yeah. that's what he said is like, uh, you know, he went to Nam. He was yeah. in the shit, and uh, like Rick and, Baker. I'm gonna run down a couple of Rick Baker's credits, and when you hear these, you'll be like, oh yeah, no, he's more of a creature designer than like a death. Yeah, Tom, Tom Savini is did, the type of guy uh, that goes and like hangs out at a body farm just to get an idea of like what it would look like and shit. But sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Rick Baker did It's Alive. He did Squirm. Uh, he did Star Wars A New Hope for the Cantina scene. He what? Did, oh, sick. I yeah, love it. He did The Howling. He did Funhouse, American Werewolf in London, Videodrome, Michael Jackson's Thriller, uh, Harry and the Hendersons, nice. uh, Men in Black. Like, he's he is a creature designer above all uh and he did win an award for um ed wood for doing the makeup to make uh make martin landau look like bell lugosi nice oh and he he did uh the judge for frighteners so <laughs> points, oh yeah points on my points in my book love it when they hold <laughs> still <laughs> but uh oh god i i just steamrolled through a whole bunch of this and did all of my notes do you guys have anything else you want to add in for the incredible melting man besides matt i'm sorry that i didn't like this movie i realize now that talking to you that it truly is incredible <laughs> no but can we talk about the fact that that guy was fishing in like an aqueduct <laughs> it's, not, it's not a river <laughs> he might he might catch a turd if he's lucky that's gonna be about it <laughs> Well, we all caught a turd this week by watching this one. Um, but but um, Adam, this does have a little bit of overlap with things that you like because we have the, the shitty kids smoking the biggest cigarettes in the world. Um, that that scene in itself, in and of itself, should have made. Yeah, we the one little kids like like essentially like yeah, you pussy. I don't cough when I smoke it. It does have all the trappings I, of a bad movie because what do we have? We got 15 minutes of little kids running around in the fucking woods. Oh, dude, I forgot to talk about that. The fucking music when those little kids are running around in the woods is ridiculous. Do you remember it's it like at all? weird dreamy music, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's like... Dink, 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 dink. <laughs> like, it's basically Wait, like Mr. Sandman. Sing, yeah, I was about to say, just sing Mr. Sandman. <laughs> Melting man, bring me a dream. Boom, 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 boom. Dum, bum, hey, you bum, have bum. never seen the sun unless you've seen it through the winter sun. <laughs> I want to be Ted. You be Judy. But while you're pulling it up, there is uh, my my second favorite uh, dialogue scene in this movie is right near the end. Ted has finally found Steve, and and he saved him from falling over the thing. Also, probably deathly irradiated him. So really, it's not going to end happy either way. But. The guards show up, and he just keeps going, I'm Dr. Tenson. And they're like, yeah, we don't know who that is. Like, what are you doing? And he's like, listen to me, damn it. I'm Dr. Ted Nelson. <laughs> it's like, that's not helping. Um, all right. All right, I have it pulled up. So do you want to play Judy or Ted? I'm going to be Ted. You ready? Okay. Steve escaped. Oh, God. What are you going to do? Um... Did you get some crackers? I told you yesterday that we needed some crackers. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I knew there was something. You know, there's there's a pad there by the phone. You know, you could write it down. So what about Steve? So, we don't <laughs> have any crackers? Ted, Steve. Steve, I've got to go out and find Steve. Yeah. Awesome. Well written, tight, tight dialogue, too. <laughs> Nothing ruins the sense of urgency in a movie. <laughs> like... Well, the bitch forgot his crackers. She got one goddamn job. <laughs> I just want to say that the whole the whole end of this movie is is very cliche trope of those old monster movies that you would see, but 
it's got this weird twist on it where it's a man at the end, but there's a lot of movies from the 60s and 70s where somebody gets turned into a monster and there's like their wife still loves them or there's a woman that loves them and the woman tragically dies at the end of the movie and you get that end scene of like the monster all sad and then the monster dies and that's exactly what fucking happens in this movie dr ted nelson dr ted nelson um dies and then there's a five minute scene of the monster just being very sad and morose and then lying down and melting to death and it's like, wow, he loved him. They loved each other. <laughs> um, apparently, <laughs> the you... original version of the screenplay uh, was called Ghoul from Space. And you weren't supposed to know um, it was an astronaut until the very end. It was going to be the big reveal of the movie. Uh, I'm kind of glad that we don't have to deal with that. So, um, the the uh, you know, when the Melting Man just kind of like Charlie Brown's his way to the like the spot where he's going to melt himself to death. Yeah. Um you know in arrested development when oh. like <laughs> Christmas time is here. <laughs> yeah, can we can someone uh re-edit that for us <laughs> and post it on the Facebook page that would really make my make my day. Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Mega Ran, teacher, rapper, hero, and huge wrestling fan. Every week, you can join me and my co-host and a special guest talking about the week in wrestling, talking about historic events, and playing some great hip-hop influenced by, you got it, wrestling. It's Mega Ran. Matt Mania is the name of the show. Search that on any of your favorite podcast apps. Tune in, turn it up, and get busy. What did you guys watch this week? I'm going to go first. going to throw you all for a loop. Cause I didn't watch, I didn't, Whoa. I didn't watch Whoa. shit. But I have been playing a lot of Fallout New Vegas, <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'm terrible at that game. I really suck balls at it. Before anybody in the Facebook group starts giving me tips, fuck off. I don't want tips. I'm just bad at the game. <laughs> All right, I've had multiple conversations where people try to give me tips, and I'm just really bad at this fucking game. I don't know what to do about it. But there is a lot of like, have you guys ever played any of the Fallout games? Uh, no. I have well, not. Well, the now. conceit of the game is like it, there. It's the apocalypse. It's been like nuclear wasteland, and there's all nuclear. Nuclear. nuclear? It's pronounced nuclear. <laughs> um, so there's nuclear wasteland, and it, it, there's vaults all over the place. But each and every one of the vaults was some sort of different type of social experiment. So there's vaults where there was 110 men and one woman, or 110 women and one man. Or there was like a political system, and each year somebody had to be sacrificed to the vault. Um, so there is like a lot of horror tropes in there, like the lottery and and stuff like that. Um, so it's a very interesting game in that regard. I think you guys would, if even if you guys didn't want to play the game, like just looking up the lore of like a lot of the stuff that's happening in the game is really cool. There's this one vault where a guy, it was just one dude put into the vault with like a hundred ventriloquist dummies. And and they locked him in there, and like you're locked in for like an indeterminate amount of time. And he went crazy and just started talking to all the ventriloquist dummies and stuff like that. So there's a lot of like really cool lore behind the games, and I'd love to find out more on my own by playing it. Except I fucking suck at it, and I have a really hard time. <laughs> um. So I, I'll go next. I uh, rewatched a film from the '80s that I always forget about. And then when I watch it, I realize that it's probably one of my favorite movies and definitely my favorite Steve Martin movie. Have either of you ever seen man with two brains? Nope. Okay. So it's the perfect movie to be talking about while talking about incredible melting man, because it's what incredible melting man want it to be, but successfully um, it's Steve Martin's attempt at a crazy 50s sci-fi movie. The concept being that he's the most famous brain doctor of all time. And he goes to another country with his wife, who's like a black widow. Like she's she marries people and then murders them for their money type deal. Uh, and that is um, uh, Kathleen Turner. It's her second ever movie. Uh, and she plays this gold digging bitch that he marries. But in his research, he meets another scientist played by David Warner, who is like you know, kind of in a lot of the movies that we've discussed in the past. And he has figured out a way to keep the brain alive 
for a couple days and he's going to try to transfer it into the body of a gorilla. But somehow Steve Martin can communicate with this one brain that's voiced by Sissy Spacek and decides that he's going to try to kill his terrible wife and put this brain in her body instead so he can be married to someone who's as hot as his wife but way nicer. Um, There's like cameos from like Jeffrey Combs. Like there's just a ton of 80s horror references mixed into this like very 50s slapstick sci-fi comedy but there's points in the movie where you can see that like Steve Martin's toying around with how could he play the evil dentist the year la- a year later in Little Shop of Horrors because it's a lot of that same like manic version of Steve Martin but I just find this it, it wasn't very successful but I think it's his favorite movie because a lot of the like small jokes in this film are referenced in pretty much every movie he wrote afterwards. Like he's always bringing things back to this particular movie, but it's a really fucking funny, good time and has one of the best, uh, like up there with, uh, just one of the guys unexpected boob moments I've ever seen in a movie. (laughs) So (laughs) that's all I got. Scott, take us home. All right. Well, I watched, uh, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, I talked about watching, um, uh, what was that horror doc I watched? Um, did you watch yeah. Electric Boogaloo? Yeah, Electric Boogaloo. It wasn't necessarily horror, but um, you were like, oh, watch Not Quite Hollywood and Machete Maidens Unleashed. Um, I, I couldn't find a copy of Not Quite Hollywood, but I uh, watched a copy of Machete Maidens and realized, like, I, I'm, I'm 10 minutes in, I'm like, man, this seems real familiar. Uh, and I get 20 minutes and I'm like, oh, I already watched this, <laughs> but I watched it again. Uh, it's it's a fun movie. It's really – I like – It's it's a good time. I like all of the movies that that guy makes because I always feel like I end up with a list of movies that I'm kind of curious about seeing. Yeah, I don't think that I really want to watch anything from Machete Maidens Unleashed. <laughs> uh, it's really not my scene, you know, like exploitation in general, especially like hey, age. Go you start talking kind of shit. shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> she was in caged heat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was the most shocked I've ever heard Adam. <clears throat> uh anybody listening that hasn't listened to our episode of The Granny from September, go listen to it. But um yeah, this is a good time. Uh and I also uh I, I will be talking about Not Quite Hollywood. I just need to track down a copy of it because I definitely haven't seen that. All right, well, that was The Incredible Melting Man from 1977, as picked by me. So if you think that you've got better taste than this guy, let us know what movies you'd like us to discuss at hmnpodcast at gmail.com. Also, go and check out all the cool stuff on our website. We've got a store. We've got an iTunes page where you can rate and review us. We've got um, a Patreon account that we mentioned earlier. Maybe we'll go do some, like, bonus content, like Happy Death Day. Who knows? Maybe. I don't know. We're not sure what we're going to do. But keep checking us out and get involved on the Facebook page if you haven't. The Facebook page is filled with a lot of cool people who have a lot of cool opinions and share a lot of cool shit. Uh, Sometimes 20 people all share the exact same Jamie Lee Curtis story on that Facebook page. But (laughs) That was like two people. Come on. (laughs) But it is what it is. Anyway, we will be back next week. But we're going to watch a movie that Adam picked. And uh, I didn't hate it. I'm going to give you an advanced screening here. Didn't hate it. Come check it out next week. You're listening to the Geekscape Network. 